uh, hi everyone i hope you can see my screen um right so um i am nivedita a mobile engineer internet small case i work on the cross platform app and the website uh today i'm going to share with you all what we as a team have learned about accessibility and its implementation in the past few months um this talk will be about the basics of accessibility why even care about accessibility why waste precious devas on accessibility uh some guidelines that were set up by the web content accessibility guidelines group to fix accessibility and uh, how android and ios natively support uh, devs to make their apps accessible and of course react native a uh, certain problems that you may face in implementing ally for your mobile apps and then of course a brief discussion about ally tool so let's get started uh what is ally or a11y what's the whole buzz about ally is accessibility it's how usable a website app or digital experience is to all users irrespective of their ability or disability um why should you care if you're uh, not disabled you should you can let it be right no over a billion people in the world are disabled people with disabilities have a higher chance of unemployment and everyone is likely to be disabled at some point in their lives uh, some countries legally require websites to be accessible which is unfortunately not the case for india right now um so if you think about accessibility uh, sorry disability maybe just visual uh, visual impairment comes to your mind but there are actually four types of disabilities uh, you have a uh, visual impairment that can be due to blindness low level vision or color blindness uh such people use screen magnifiers or use their uh, software zoom capabilities to access content then uh you have people who are hearing impaired they they could be uh, deaf or hard of hearing with various levels of hearing loss ranging from mild to profound then you could have people with mobility impairments they uh, will have problems related to movement due to physical or neurological disorders for them their uh, mobile devices would be attached to their wheelchairs let's say and they would not be able to uh, access the other half of the mobile device maybe even only from the left hand side for example um then you have cognitive impairment people with intellectual disabilities or old age we're all going to grow old difficult we'll have they'll have difficulty in thinking and remembering so let's talk about an example of how disability people with disabilities perceive the world and how the world is a, is hindering their uh, is hindering them so um wordle is a word game that we use that we play uh, to where you have to guess a five letter word and you get some clues along the way so during the lockdown all of us played it and shared it on our social media like twitter it was annoying for those people who access their phones using screen readers not because they're snobs but because of the following reason i will now play a clip of how a screen reader reads out word results on twitter comma three green square white large square white large square new line three green square white large square white large square new line three green square white large square yellow square new line five green square this is my latest wordle so as you can see that part was you, screen reader users would hear a long indecipherable list of yellow green white squares and they would have no context as to what exactly they're reading it's inaccessible and confusing so a dev called josh wordle developed a tool called wally.co where you can paste your wordle results and generate descriptive alt text that laid out lays down all the context of what exactly you're sharing to your social media this is how it reads a grid of colored squares representing letters which is five across and four down the first and second rows both show three green and two gray squares the green represents a letter that's in the word and in the right place gray represents a letter that's not in the word the third row shows three green squares one gray square and one yellow square the yellow represents a letter that's in the word but in the wrong place the fourth row shows five green squares which means all the letters are in the right place to make up the word right 
So as you can see, the second part of the example gave a lot of context and was easily accessible to someone accessing their content using a screen reader. Come on. Right. So why do you need to make your apps accessible? You might be actively discriminating against people who cannot access your app if it doesn't work for them. The social model of disability says that people are disabled by barriers of society, not by their disability themselves. Themselves, like for example, if if I need a wheelchair to access a certain building, uh, I am hampered not by the fact that I need the wheelchair, but because the building itself is not accessible to people using a a ramp. Um, also. making your apps accessible can have serious business use cases people who need to order food through your apps uh, it'll help them in their lives and making an app making your apps inaccessible is like using the color throughout your app when you know some part of your users can't see the color blue, blue uh, yellow let's say can't perceive it um this meme for example itself is inaccessible uh just like just like the wordle example where you should paste a descriptive uh, information about your word or result you should also add captions to to your videos and images that you upload on linkedin and twitter let's say uh i'll read out the meme so your anakin is saying he uh, saying that i've added sub added subtitles to make my content accessible um padme is saying but not automatically generated ones right so he's looking at her like that and then she spouts some nonsense which comes out when the captions are automatically generated Hmm. So, how do you go about making your apps accessible? Are you supposed to wing it? No. You have something called the Web Content Accessibility Guidelines. They were set up by someone called the World Wide Web Consortium (W three C). They organized. Um, they organized all the uh, accessibility rules under four principles. Major things that your web app content must be to be considered inaccessible. For each guideline, there are testable. successful criteria like success criteria at that level uh, so you have three levels which get progressively stricter for example for level a you wouldn't want content in your application to be recognizable only by color like you wouldn't want two buttons green and red and let the users assume that green would mean it's something uh, positive and the red means it's something negative a uh, level double a would mean text color should meet some particular contrast requirements so that they can be read easily and level triple a which is the hardest to follow is some very dark color on a very light type of background so what are these four principles that uh, the w3c guidelines are divided under your content should be perceivable small screen sizes give one sec Uh, right small screen sizes limit the information people can view at a time so if you uh, if they have to magnify the screen and see it they would have to continuously scroll in order to perceive it so how do we fix that we provide a reasonable default size for content and touch control so that the users don't have to continue to zoom in and out you position the form fields below their labels so that instead of like beside their labels so that similarly the users don't have to scroll horizontally in order to access it and your uh, app should allow magnification up to by 200% and there should be some minimum level double a contrast required a 4.5 is to 1 hmm. your content should be operable not just by users who use it through uh, the touch phone uh, touch screen itself also by users who use it through external uh, keyboards um the touch target size and spacing so touch target should be at least 9 cross 9 mm and there should be some inactive space around so that they don't click on it by mistake a uh, touch screen gestures should indicate what happens when you set uh, upon that gesture and uh, even if you have some fancy device manipulation gestures you should still give an alternative for people who use your phone using keyboards let's say and buttons should be placed in an accessible manner so that they can be uh, used in which, whichever manner uh, the device is held in uh, the third principle would be what your your content must be understandable your screen reader should detect when the orientation changes like your content's orientation changes 
and your screen should support both orientations like going back to the previous example where a person with mobility their uh, their mobile device would be attached to their wheelchair so they would not be able to change its orientation again your uh, layout should be consistent any navigational mechanisms that are repeated on multiple pages should appear in the same order throughout um any components that have the same functionality should work the same way everywhere like two buttons should have the same with identical functionality should have the same text you provide clear information that elements are actionable you they should have some conventional shape size positioning you provide instructions for custom touch screen and manipulation gestures like if you have tool tips or tool or overlays you explain you should be able to explain to the user what gesture can be used to control it the final principle would be your apps should be robust uh, you should set the virtual keyboard to the type of data entry required this is no no brainer then you provide easy methods for data entry so text entry can be tedious even for um, people who are not disabled so you should provide more radio buttons and cute little check boxes if possible and uh, you should support the characteristic properties of the platform so if your platform allows you to allow the users to zoom out they should the text should be wrapped and they shouldn't have to scroll horizontally to get that information <clears throat> so now all that now that we have discussed all those four principles it might seem a little overwhelming to you god knows it did to me and for people who are only listening to the talk this is jake rada saying cool 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 very anxiously right so now we going to discuss how uh, we can implement ally on our mobile apps mm, there are three uh, simple things that you can look at when you want to implement uh, accessibility on your android ios and react native apps you design well defined clear task flows with minimal navigation steps uh, especially if you major user tasks and make sure those tasks are navigable by a focus control external keyboard um you label user interface components that do not have any clear indication of what happens when you interact with them and you can sh you should make sure users can navigate with using a uh, screen uh, using external keyboards and such or a switch so natively on android this is an example of how you can set uh, android content description to describe a particular ui element um similarly you can set something called screen reader focusable attribute to true for a particular view so that all of its inner objects um can and, and all the and the focusable attribute of all its inner objects to false so that when screen reader goes through this particular view all the inner objects can be collected together and screen reader would read out all the properties one by one and users won't have to separately focus on them um natively ios has a comprehensive comprehensive set of methods provided to the ns object uh, which is the root class of most objective c class hierarchies and from which the subclasses inherit a basic system to the runtime sy uh, system uh, so what does ui accessibility provide it's a set of methods that provide accessibility information about views and controls in an apps interface UI accessibility container is used by view subclasses to make the sub uh, sub components accessible as separate elements UI accessibility action would uh, be a set of methods that tell accessibility elements uh, these are the specific actions that we support and use UI accessibility focus would determine whether voiceover has focus currently on a particular element so now we come to implementing ally on react native both as we just discussed both android and ios provide apis for integrating apps with assistive tech like screen reader or voiceover react native has a complementary set of apis that lets your app accommodate all users so what are these first of all we have something called accessible which takes a boolean value when true this indicates that the view is an accessibility element which means that all of its children are grouped together into a single selectable component and you don't have the user won't have to individually um, focus on each of its children to get the accessibility label let's say um all touchable elements are accessible by default then you have something called accessible role accessibility role it communicates the purpose of an element whether the element of, is a button a link a header Mm, here for example setting the accessibility role heading 
is useful for navigation throughout the app. The user can go through all the headings in a particular screen and find out where they are, figure out stuff. Um, then you have something called the accessibility label. It provides a sense of purpose to the current element. So how is it different from role? Role would refer to a button, while label would refer to, let's say, saying that tap on this button to watch list this particular item. Um, what is accessibility state? It's the current state of a component. The current state can be disabled, selected, expanded, um, right? And then you have something called accessibility hint. Here, you would give a hint to the user how things will turn out if they actually go ahead and um, click on a particular button. It'll, it can tell them that clicking on this particular button will open, it will redirect them to the mobile browser instead of opening a new view in the same app. Um, here's an example of the difference between role and label. You have a button, clicking on it will submit code, and it's currently disabled. Here, had we had, like, instead of submit code, had we had some generic text, like, let's say, click me or button, is you would have had to add a label here to tell users that clicking on this particular button will lead them to submit code. But since that text is already descriptive, we wouldn't need to add extra things. Uh, these are the other uh, properties available. Some are a few of them are specific to Android and few are specific to iOS. Here, for example, accessibility live region is a good way on Android to make announcements. When this property is set to true, any changes to this view will be announced automatically. Um, and here you have a property called polite, which means that the current uh, announcement, like this particular announcement, is not going to interrupt whatever screen reader was saying at that particular moment. Hmm. So now um, I would like to talk about examples of a few ally problems that a person can face when they are making apps or websites. Uh, so this is a tweet. Someone uh, sent this out recently that if you put in too many ARIA attributes in your HTML, is that accessibility? This refers to the problem of too much versus too less. Can your application be too accessible? You don't want to go ahead and label everything, right? You don't want to create unnecessary noise when the user goes through your app using a screen reader. At the same time, you don't want to leave out on the important stuff. You don't want to give them radio silence. Uh, so adding on to that, let's say you have a text as an image where if this particular image was a header of a particular uh, carousal on the small case app, referring to small case specials. Since this was an image, it was not accessible to users at all. They had no idea what was up. Uh, this, both these examples refer to making images accessible. First one being where it's an informative image. The second one being where an image is used as a button, an icon used as a button. Here, voiceover would read out just funds and 10 crore, not telling the user about the icon button, uh, the button there, right? Okay. <laughs> and then next, uh, we have something called a small case card. This can be this can be about any card displaying information about a particular object. Here, it happens to be a small case. Uh, you have a name, a label, you have a name, description, a watch list icon, and the whole card is clickable. Uh, clicking on this particular card will lead the users to the small case profile screen. Let's say we add, um, we add a label, accessibility label to this particular watch list icon. VoiceOver is going to read out what's available, uh, visible on the screen. Like it's going to read out all the information and then it'll say tap to watch list. This information is misleading because tapping to tapping on this card is not going to lead them to watch list the small case. It's going to lead them to the profile screen. So why did this happen? This happened because touchable elements have accessible true by default. And because of that, all the elements were gathered together into one single focusable element. So it's not possible for us to individually focus on the watch list and tell users, hey, you can click on this instead to watch this. So how do you go about fixing this? First, you can just go ahead and set in uh, accessible to false for this particular card. That will not be the right way to fix this situation. Instead, you should set uh, the header, like only set the header to be clickable. Uh, this refers to a particular problem people even face in web accessibility of uh, nested interactive elements where interactive controls must not have focusable descendants. Mm, 
then next problem would be about uh, discussing accessibility focus order in react native let's say you have a card where information has been uh, divided into two columns you would want screen reader to read it out like this stats slot head armor five encumbrance one but what actually happens is screen reader particularly on ios we read it like stats when equipped slot head efficiency armor five completely messing up the order so why does that happen on the web screen readers determine the flow in which things are read by looking at the dom tree and they go from top to bottom but you don't have a similar structure on mobile apps ios reads elements from left to right top to bottom like it'll read this particular column like 1 3 2 4 which will not be uh, will not work for us in this particular say, case um to fix this you can use natively on ios you can use um should group accessibility children where uh, like a uh, one and two will be grouped together and read out in one um uh, way um and a react native doesn't have an a way to fix this so a quick hack would be to um create a wrapper that allows you to adjust the behavior of the native platform according and group all the subviews together for accessibility purposes so now that we have discussed tools uh, now that we've discussed um particular problems in react uh, in implementing uh, accessibility on react native um i think we can also discuss on how once you've made your access as accessible you can go ahead and test it for accessibility um so what are these tools on the ios simulator you have the accessibility inspector where you can click on the crosshair icon and uh, first of all you need to choose uh, the particular app you want to run it on it has to be your simulator or as you consider your uh, simulator as a desktop app and treat it differently uh, you can click on the crosshair icon and then uh, inspect a particular element on your app to find out more details like label value trait and you can also get all the actions that can be performed for this particular component mm since you cannot use a voice over like ios simulator does not have an inbuilt voice over you can only test voice over on your physical devices so here are a few voice over gestures that you can try out on your iphones for android you have the accessibility scanner it's an automated tool which can record workflows take screenshots of screens and then audit them for accessibility issues and uh, propose solutions based on the following whether the content has labels whether the touch target size is large enough whether the items are clickable and uh, there is some contrast in the text uh here is here is the image of uh, after we run the accessibility scanner on one screen of the smartcase app it goes ahead and audits that particular screen pointing to uh, to us that the item label uh, does not exist for this particular icon and the touch target size is not big enough um similarly for uh, physical devices you have the screen reader called talkback um i think you should try it out on your phones and then find out um, how these gestures work uh so i would now like to touch upon how these or uh, like the importance of manual testing in accessibility testing because these tools may tell you that a particular label does not exist but they won't be able to tell you whether the particular label makes sense and similarly if all, if all you carry out on your apps is manual testing you may miss out a few edge cases more so if you are not disabled and you test the app so in that case you need to find a healthy mix of um, manual and automated testing uh here was the end this is the end of my presentation um hope you could understand what i was saying uh thank you